So why buy sneakers on resale? Why would you like want to buy a pair of sneakers and pay more money for them? Well, there's a few reasons really. I think uh, one of them would be like uh, missed out on a new release. So that would be something like, uh, you know, if you're a larger size and the sneakers in demand and maybe you, you missed out because you didn't win any of the raffles, which uh, is an odd system in itself and uh, you still want the, the pair of trainers, then obviously you'd go to the resale market to grab them. And then also it could be the fact that the limited availability, i.e. a collab. So the recent one that released was the Jordan 1 uh, trophy rooms and they were sort of very limited and I thought they wouldn't be. However, those are going for extremely a lot of money and uh, you basically sort of resorted to having to pay resale for those uh, and if you really, really want them. and basically that's when you sort of look at buying for resale as well and then maybe like sneakers that are no longer available at retail so this could be a sneaker that was around and say six months later or 12 months down the line you decided you actually want it now and uh, say a good one is uh, the Jordan 1 Palomino they're pretty much a uh, it's out of stock now in retail and uh, the only way to grab this is now sort of on the resale market so that's a uh, sort of another reason and then the sort of last reason is, you know, you basically buy old sneakers that are sort of five, ten years old that haven't been retroed and, you know, you're a collector, for example, and or you're really wanting a, a sneaker that sort of reminded you of a time, you know, 10, 10 15 years ago. And you may sort of look at the, the resale market to, to grab those. And that's where the, the resale market is really strong in that respect, that there's a, a range. And uh, what I looked at was sort of the markets that were available in the UK so we don't have access to for example Poison and uh, that looks like a, a good uh, resale platform as well and uh, the only ones that I will be focusing on is uh, StockX, Goat and eBay and this will only be sneakers so I won't be covering other sort of categories such as video games, apparel, clothing, handbags that kind of stuff and uh, also I, I'm not covering uh, consignment and resale uh, stores. The uh, reason why is I always find the prices to be slightly on the higher side and there are sort of pros to going to a resale store so i.e. if you want to sort of trade them a pair of trainers in for another pair for example or you want to sort of try on a pair before you go out to buy it but what I've usually found is the resale uh, consignment stores are quite sort of limited with their stock anyway in terms of their range so you probably won't have a full size run of stuff and it's more likely that depending on the, the trainer that you're getting, you may not be able to get that. And that's why the resale market online is, is a better bet. And uh, I've personally not found the resale uh, market in terms of sort of consignment stores not to be that great. And uh, I've tried contacting a few, for example, over sort of the last year or so to look at sort of exchanging, uh, well, or should I say trading a pair of trainers or a few pairs of trainers for another pair of trainers. and I've got no sort of responses which I find a bit sort of weird really because you'd be looking at kind of you know sort of responding to people to get their business but it doesn't sound like it so in that respect I'm not covering that particular avenue but uh, maybe later on down the line once I have more experience on that and uh, so the first one is uh, StockX so how, how it works so normally you can buy online so on the website uh, and basically being able to download their app and obviously you need to register and put in your card information and all that kind of stuff and uh, StockX have a, a range of items and they've been doing this for quite a while so you can buy sort of trainers, clothing, accessory, video games as well as other things like cards and that kind of stuff so it's a, it's a good market in terms of its range and it has a lot of stuff so sellers would ask for a certain price that they're sort of putting their product up uh, so for instance, this instance a pair of trainers and uh, it's up to you and whether you want to buy it at that price and StockX will charge a fee for to buy it and also postage as well so on top of that so whatever you see the ask price as is not the actual price that you're paying you have to put on the fees and postage on top of that and if you can also basically bid on an item so it's similar sort of to eBay really and uh, you can see if someone sort of accepts that bid of yours and sometimes it's sort of hit and miss just depends on how badly you want that particular sneaker and whether they are sort of extremely priced high and some people may go lower so in this instance the trophy room uh, you might be able to put a bid in uh, you know if it's sort of floating around the 400 pounds mark 
and you put in a bid in that 350 it could be accepted or it may not be but it just depends and you probably need to look at the trends for the uh, ask prices and and see actually what the sneakers sold for and put in a, a, a sort of acceptable bid really uh, sometimes you can go quite low on certain trainers as well if they're sort of less in demand and uh, I've seen that work for me personally and I think the delivery times for StockX is around the sort of two to anywhere between sort of two to 14 days. We don't really have uh, instant ship here at the moment. So that's one of the, the things about it is it does take a long time because it takes the, the, the seller to ship to StockX, StockX and authenticate, and then it comes to the buyer. So with the final thoughts on StockX, they have low prices compared to GOAT. So in that respect, they, they do appear to be a lot lower in terms of pricing, in my opinion. And this is obviously in the, in the UK. Um, from what I gather, the US seems to be slightly different. And obviously, they have a, a wide selection of trainers. So they have a, a lot of uh, different types of pairs of trainers that are on the site. And uh, they also have sort of older trainers as well. So there's a good selection of those as well. And whether you like it or not, you get a StockX tag on that. And the reason why I find that relevant is I know like uh, there's a lot of fakes out there and, and that kind of stuff. But the reason why I like that is if you get a pair of trainers that you've got in hand and then you bought them off StockX and for whatever reason they have a defect or you didn't, you know, sort of think they're described as not as described, that at least they have the StockX tag and then you can sort of say, look, this is this is from you and this is your pair and I'm not happy with it. And uh, so you can sort of speak to them about that and usually they're pretty good. I found that uh, there's a couple of times that I had that instance and when I bought a pair of uh, Jordan 3 Desert Elephants that the elephant print was missing on one of the sneakers completely on the heel. And uh, I reported that and they pretty much uh, asked me to send the sneakers back and, and basically issued a refund or they sort of said we'll give you a partial refund. So it can be pretty good. So with the cons, I think uh, the added fees and uh, postage. So basically you pay that on top. So that can be one of those things that I wish they sort of made that transparent. So as soon as you sort of see the arch price, that's all included. And quality control. So like I mentioned with the sort of example earlier around my, the desert, ele desert elephants not having the elephant print on there, for example, or I had another pair that the 2002 protection pack, the rain cloud version that I bought and the label, uh, on the box was in Chinese and in that instance I can't really do nothing about it because they don't really cover the box in their sort of terms and conditions the box isn't really part of the deal so I know they're not fake because they come with the you know I can sort of see that they're actually a real, real pair but it's just the fact that they were sort of sourced from China and I imagine that's what probably works out for cheaper for them to sort of sell that on but at the same time I would like to know, would like to have known that beforehand so it would have been good to sort of see sort of photos of, of that example and uh, I, I suppose like the authenticity because as much as any of these resale I'm not just saying StockX in general but any of these resale platforms can't really sort of justify saying they're 100% authentic, authentic. and uh, I've not so far found a pair that I bought that I've had where I thought it's not really authentic to me and uh, I know other people have bought pairs that are uh, unauthentic and I, I think that's maybe mostly sort of happened during the sort of sneaker boom time during sort of 2020 to 2022 and uh, I think nowadays pretty much all the trainers are authentic I think the only ones that probably wouldn't be something like a really sort of hype uh, sneaker such as a Travis Scott I'm always a bit dubious about buying that on the resale market for example and uh, I think uh, one of those things with the cons for StockX as well like they kind of uh, pitch themselves as the uh, stock market platform for trainers and uh, the resale price is pretty much dictated by StockX. I mean, if you ever watch any of the sort of YouTube videos where people are doing sort of cash outs and basically buying sneakers, they always refer to the uh, ask price or the price that it's sold at. And sometimes it, that that is an indication of the market. So you might be in, I don't know, uh, China or another market where it, that sneaker is sold for less, but because it's been bought for less, so you can't use that as a guarantee to sort of see what the resale market is like and it covers worldwide. I think if you sort of narrow that down to your own country and your own market, so I, I live in the UK and those prices like, you know, paying, I don't know, £80 for a pair of Jordan 1 low black toes, I don't think that is so much relevant. I'm sure, you're sure there are deals out there and people who sort of need the money are selling them on, but I'd be a bit kind of dubious as to you know people accepting those types of bids really and 
for me, I, I don't believe fully the, the resale prices that they actually, some of these trainers actually sell for uh, because they seem to way, way too low. And uh, also um, they, with StockX, there's no sort of used products. So, which I not a really too much of a fan of because I, you know, sometimes nice to sort of go into the sort of used markets, especially if you want to buy like an old pair that you haven't had for a long time and it's not available, uh, you know, brand new. So with Goat, you can buy uh, online now and also download the app. I don't remember it being online before, but it was quite a sort of recent thing, I think. And again, with uh, Goat, they have basically were selling trainers for quite a long time, but they've introduced other uh, areas as well, which is the clothing and accessories. And with Goat, they include the, uh, basically the, in, within the ask price, they include their fees as well. So that's why typically it feels a bit higher than uh, StockX. And uh, the postage is a separate fee on top. So just remember that. So whenever you go to sort of buy off of Goat, it's uh, one of those ones where the postage is uh, not part of the deal. And uh, similar to StockX, you can also bid on items and see if someone accepts your bid. But I found Goat doesn't work as well as StockX when you're sort of bidding on items. And also I feel that part of it is sort of recessed and not really uh, easy to find to bid on an item whilst on StockX it's very easy and uh, also if you're selling on uh, Goat which is the uh, alias that they call it uh, the platform that they sell that they used to sell your sneakers you can also just use that credit that you have to basically buy sneakers off of Goat and they usually otherwise charge a fee of like three percent so basically if you've sold a pair of sneakers for 100 pounds they typically charge you a three percent cash out fee so that's to transfer it to your bank However, if you keep it within the, the GOAT account, you can avoid that 3% and, it, and put it towards another pair of sneakers if you want to. And they also have instant ship, which I found uh, I've used sort of once, I think, in, in sort of the last year or so, and uh, it's been really good. And uh, But typically the delivery times is uh, similar to StockX, around sort of 3 to 14 days, and sometimes it can be quicker on GOAT. So with the final thoughts, I like that they have a wide selection. I think it's one of those ones where Actually, it's probably a bit easier to find certain pairs of trainers because of their sort of search system. And I, I feel they have a, a slightly bigger sort of back catalog as well. Uh, and that includes sort of really sort of older trainers. And uh, they also have used products as well. So there's a few times I've sold some used trainers on Goat uh, as an example. And uh, it's quite nice to sort of have that because sometimes you don't want to pay like top dollar for something that is you know, a sneaker that's really, really expensive and and it's quite nice to sort of pay, uh, you know, something that's already been used and get it at a cheaper price. And uh, the quality control, I say, has been pretty, you know, pretty bang on with, uh, with Goat. And they even go as far as, uh, you know, looking at the box condition and sort of say, okay, the box has got a sort of rip on it or damage on it. And then they usually sort of say, you know, do you want to accept it? And then they'll give you a little bit of a discount on it. And with the cons, I think the, the prices are typically higher. Uh, it's because it includes fees, but also the fees are slightly more than StockX from what I found anyway. So, and then also it doesn't include the postage, so you have to sort of add that on top. And uh, this is where I have a bit of an issue with Goat, where the authenticity, because there's no sort of tags clipped to the actual sneaker itself, and they they put in there like a little bookmark leaflet. It's uh, one of those things that it's difficult to sort of argue against a pair of trainers that you've received and you sort of say this isn't up to par or this is, has a defect on it because there's no tag to sort of say that it's from GOAT. So in that instance, I think it's one of those ones where I haven't had like issues with it in general, but I would be a bit kind of miffed as to how much support you'd get based upon, you know, if I have an issue with a trainer that, you know, they'll say, yeah, it's, it's, it's up, you know, we, we will fix it kind of thing. So but not to say that they wouldn't, I've just not had that opportunity to, or haven't had that uh, misfortune to basically uh, go through that. And uh, with eBay, I think uh, you can buy on online and, and download the app as well, so similar to the other two. And with uh, eBay, they obviously have so many types of things that you can buy on there, it's pretty much everything similar to Amazon, they cover a, a really wide base. And trainers is slightly sort of new to them for the last sort of couple of years, two, three years, where they've kind of focused more on it and uh, introduced the authenticity guarantee program. 
And uh, basically the ask price is usually what you're going to pay. So there's no sort of hidden fees or, or, or kind of other fees that you need to pay. And postage is usually sort of on top because that's part of the authenticity guarantee. And it's usually cheaper than uh, StockX and Goat. So I'll, we'll give them that. And uh, the ask price is obviously dictated by sellers mostly. So, you know, you, you can sort of see it goes up and down. And you can also bid on items based upon if a, an item is up for auction or not. And, uh, and if someone accepts the bid so but it just depends you can put in offers depending on the seller so some sellers won't like you to have send them offers uh, some some sellers do like it and then some sellers will put you know trainers on auction and uh, the ebay authenticity guarantee is is basically they tag the sneaker so that also includes like an rfid where it kind of tracks back to uh, when the sneaker was purchased and that it has sort of ebay seal approval and that's all sort of done online and i think that's a really good system and with the final thoughts i think they have a, a good selection i don't think it's as wide as say uh goat or StockX in terms of what you can buy in my eyes i find the prices to be lower than uh, typically what stop stock x and goat have um but obviously a lot of these trainers you can't really put a bid on so for example on stock x you could put a bid on that could be accepted but ebay you're kind of accepting whatever the prices are at that moment in time and based upon you know the seller what and what price they're selling it at and they have a, a selection of sort of older trainers but there's you know one of those things that you can sort of look at a uh, 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 you know used products on there as well so and that's part of what ebay do and always have done and the quality control so it's been pretty good on, on ebay there hasn't been sort of too many issues that i've found and usually if i have they've kind of sorted it out very quickly and I would say the cons, they're sort of difficult to search, so there's no sort of easy categorization. Well, say StockX and Goat, they were originally built as a sneaker platform, so they've fine-tuned their uh, search system. So if you're putting in, say, Nike, Vomero, that it kind of picks it up. And I think with eBay, it's more of a sort of free text field, so you, you can sort of search, but you may not hit up on exactly what you're looking for. And... Uh, they do have sort of filters and things like that, but I don't think for me it's not as easy to, to basically find a pair of sneakers as it is on Goat and StockX. And uh, the authenticity, so that could also be an issue with uh, eBay as well, where uh, a lot of people sell sort of fake sneakers on there, which I found anyway or I've seen. And uh, basically, you don't want to get caught out on that. And one of the things that I would suggest, as long as it sort of says authenticity guarantee at the bottom then you should be good to go but i know there's a sort of a bunch of sellers on there that are selling items that are literally fake but they don't go through the authenticity guarantee so you have to make sure that it has that sort of ticked and sort of shows that on the listing and i also think listings can be inaccurate so there's a couple of trainers that i've sold over the years and uh, so and i've been sort of guilty of that as well so it's sometimes difficult to sort of be accurate with that information and so this doesn't have sort of i suppose a fine-tune way of kind of sort of saying this is exactly what i'm selling you know by scanning in the barcode it's not so easy on ebay i mean you can scan the barcode but but i've found there's a lot more uh error to to happen because there's a lot more sort of forms to sort of fill in so with the comparison i think uh Looking at the sort of the, the range of items, I think StockX, I, I think they're not as great as sort of Goat and eBay. The reason being is they don't sell used sneakers. So that's why I sort of say they're not as, not as good. And that's why I think eBay are better for sort of sneakers that are used, but also new ones. And also with Goat as well. So Goat sell used sneakers, and but I usually find their prices to be a little bit too, a little bit on the high side. It just depends what you're what you're buying. And with the price, I think uh, StockX are really good and uh, seem to be pretty much the, the lowest, especially if you put in a bid and it's accepted. I find Goat to be the highest and then eBay to be uh, probably in line with StockX most of the time, but sometimes it can be, depending on the trainer, it can be sort of overly priced. And uh, a good example of that is the trophy rooms. And uh, with the quality control, I think uh, StockX probably not that great in my opinion from what my experience i've had like a you know two or three pairs that i wasn't too happy with and go i've had like one pair that i wasn't happy with but overall i found them to be pretty good and uh not had too many issues with them 
and eBay, I think, similar to StockX, I think there's a couple of pairs, such as I bought a pair of Yuzi Quantum, for example, and uh, the box was underneath, sort of waterlogged, which I wasn't too happy about, and it wasn't described by the seller. And obviously, eBay sort of authenticated it and said it was fine. And obviously, I know it's a, a, a box only, but I was a bit kind of annoyed that I wasn't given a discount. And in all honesty, I didn't really follow it up because the trainers were very cheap, but it's just, it would have been good to know beforehand. And uh, sometimes I've received trainers without any sort of shoe paper, for example. I know it's a small thing, but sometimes these small things matter. And uh, authenticity. So I think uh, I'd probably say StockX is a third on my list. I think uh, for, for me, uh, I, like I say, I haven't re really received uh, any bad you know, sneakers from StockX. But in respect of hearing about it and you know, seeing what other people are saying, that's the reason why I've given it a third. And then I'd say GOAT is second, in my opinion. And then I think eBay is first. The reason why is, uh, like I say, you can track the tr the sneaker on eBay back to where it was originally purchased and what day it was purchased. And basically being able to sort of have that sort of trail is really good, especially if you're selling your sneakers on as well, that at least you can sort of say to the, the person that's buying them that it's been authenticated. And, you know, you can track it and see where, you know, what, what time, what date I originally bought it and that the fact that they're legit. And uh, the delivery times on these, so I think uh, eBay have been the slowest in my opinion, so I've given them a third. And the reason why is there, there is a deadline for sellers to send trainers in, but it's quite loose uh, compared to sort of GOAT and StockX. So you, you can be given sort of any time up to about a week to basically send your sneakers. And then I'd say StockX is probably second because they're a bit slow as well. And uh, GOAT are coming in at first in my opinion. I think GOAT are you know, really good with like their delivery times there's been a few times where i found a go that i've had sneakers sort of cancelled for whatever reason and uh that's one of those things that's just a bit unfortunate really but what if apart from that any ones that i have ordered have arrived pretty much within sort of two or three days and instant ship like stockets don't have this in the uk at the moment and uh, goat do which i really like and uh you know depending on the sneaker but obviously the caveat around instant ship is it's a lot more expensive, you know, most of the time uh, compared to the other, other, you know, buying it just normally. Uh, but obviously, you do get a sneaker a lot quicker. It just depends on, you know, when you need it. And it's nice to sort of have the option, especially because sometimes, say, with the Jordan One, there isn't much difference between the instant ship price and the price that a, a seller is selling it for regularly. And uh, eBay, I think, again, they're not really instant ship, so they have a, a difficult. Uh, system in, in place they don't have a great system in place with regards to sort of delivery and uh, overall I think uh, you know I think in my opinion they're all got their pluses and minuses I think if I was to buy a pair of trainers it, my first go to was probably eBay because it's the lowest price and that's ultimately what matters to me and if I can't find it on eBay then I'd probably look towards sort of GOAT and then StockX but like I say typically I find GOAT to be higher in prices and StockX to be sort of in the middle and like I say sometimes depending on the trainer you can put a bid in and it'll be accepted on StockX and and you know you're good to go really so but you know all of them I haven't found too bad and most of the time I found them all to be uh, good enough but obviously there are sort of caveats around you know sort of buying sneakers uh, to from resale and in my opinion I would try to avoid paying resale as much as possible and just buy retail especially that the market in 2024 there's probably not very good reason to go out into the resale market to buy unless you know the reasons that i've given before that's you know the only time you would and uh, i think nowadays you can get sort of sneakers pretty much for retail and if you can't then obviously use the resale platforms as a as a go-to and uh, hopefully that's uh, helped